A certified fun instructor asks uh, XT30 versus XT60 on a three and a half inch build. Conflicting info online and building right now. So to, to me, you are, I think that you almost certainly should use an XT30. What I always do when I'm trying to decide between XT30 and XT60 is look at the batteries I'm going to use and look at what connector they come with. The battery will have a connector that is sized appropriately for the current that the battery is capable of providing, and that's going to be the limiting factor. The problem is that in the three and a half inch size is right on the dividing line. Like you could get a thousand milliamp hour 4S with an XT60, and you can get a thousand milliamp hour 4S with an XT30. 850 milliamp hours, they almost always come with XT30s, I think, but there are some out there with XT60s. I think the majority of, of uh, 850 4S batteries that you would use on a build like this are going to be XT30s. If you're putting a lithium ion pack on there, it's going to be XT30. I think most batteries that you will end up using are going to be XT30, so that's what I would probably use. Um, if you know a particular battery that you want to use and it has an XT60, then put an XT60. That's how I would handle that. Can I ask a question relative yeah, to this? For sure. Why? Absolutely. why? So isn't XT30 named that supposedly because it can handle 30 amps? Supposedly. Yeah. So, yeah. So is there, you know, I would guess that people are get, thinking that you need to use that as the rating to decide when to choose what connector yeah, that's, to use. Yeah, that's a good point. Like, I've done battery testing with the XT60, and it, uh, it can handle, I mean, I tested as high as 120 amps, and it did, it was fine. Um that 60 amp rating or for an XT60 or 30 amp rating for an XT30, I'm guessing that it is a continuous rating as in it can do 30 amps like forever without melting. Um, whereas when I did a 120 amp test on an XT60, you know, in, uh, in 45 seconds, the battery was drained and the test was over. So the XT60 would have gotten hot and melted, except that the battery was done. Um... And that's why when we use XT60 on a quadcopter and we're regularly pulling 80 amps or 100 amps, but only for a fraction of a second or maybe a few seconds, uh, the the XT60 is fine. So, yeah, that XT30, you could easily pull more than 30 amps and not melt it as long as it's not continuous. Does that, does that seem right to you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, well, if we both think it's right, then it probably, that's all we need, really. Maybe my, um, I would just say I'm sure there's documentation somewhere because we're not the only people who use them. But it would be nice to know oh, like sure. what can it take? Like, does it matter how hot is it outside? Is it 60 or 120 so on the XT30? You know, it always like matters how hot it is, right? Ambient temperature always matters, right? Right. The the flip side is that on a quadcopter in flight, you've got so much airflow. Like, uh, I'm guessing the cur actual current rating is insane. Um, the real test would be if you had something like a, a big Cine lifter with like an 8,000 milliamp hour 6S that could pull 200 amps for five minutes or whatever. I didn't do the math. That's where you, an XT60 would be like, oh crap, I'm, I'm melting. And that's why those batteries will probably use XT90s or something bigger. 